My next recipe looks like a good old British pie, but it's filled with oriental flavours. I love a good Thai chicken curry, fragrant with spices, chilli and ginger. You might think those spicy flavourings have to be imported from some exotic faraway place, but these days, that's not necessarily so. Robert Ramsden is an importer of exotic herbs and vegetables. The only problem is he doesn't want to import them. So he's on a mission to get farmers and producers to grow exotic food right here in Yorkshire. And this is grown in Gummersall. It's a box of mixed living cress. Uh, there's different varieties, different flavours of cress. Previously, we used to have to bring it back from Holland uh, in mass. We used to be bringing back 100 plus boxes per night. Robert has even managed to source coriander seeds in Yorkshire. Now, these are something really different, something really unique. Uh, you probably won't see these anywhere, really. Uh, you can see little green balls of joy, and when you squeeze them, they pop, and the flavour is absolutely insane. It's perfect for Thai green curries, etc. Perfect for uh, putting through your kind of water if you're steaming fish, really perfumey, and uh, they're just mental. And they're from Yorkshire. Robert's had great success working with herb grower Alison Dodd. Alison grows key ingredients for Thai cuisine, including lemongrass, which is usually imported from tropical Asia. Together, they're going to forage for the herbs and spices I need for my Thai chicken pie. They're quite surprising to find in Yorkshire, which is this uh, lemongrass. Chefs in the UK are used to dry lemongrass stalks, but Alison supplies fresh green leaves. It doesn't look like lemongrass. No, it doesn't, because uh, when you get it in from Thailand normally, you've got all the leaves have been cut off. Right. But the leaves, actually, are extremely uh, flavoursome. And, um, yeah. yeah, they're good, aren't they? Fantastic. How we look at it as a company is to find things that previously we've had to import, like lemongrass, for example. It comes all the way from Thailand. It travels many, many miles. It's prepared. It comes in a sleeve. Finding someone that are prepared to grow it for us and understand it. It ain't got the air miles, it's helping the environment, it's helping all parties, really. You know, some chefs have sent, you know, phoned up and said, why have you sent me the leaves? Well, because the leaves are delicious and um, they add quite a lot to a dish, especially to Paul's uh, curry pie would so be good. Say, Paul's going to love this. Absolutely. Alison has managed to grow exotic flavours outside too. Look at this. All right, Robert. This is the coriander you might need. Fantastic. Previously, we've had to buy coriander, and it's come all the way from Israel, it's grown all the way over in wherever. Finding someone who can grow it over here is really important. Even the local curry house now is looking to source UK produce where possible. Alison has been growing another herb that will add a welcome twist to my Thai pie. Right, I've got a last little surprise for you for this, right. for this curry pie. What is it? The Thai basil. Really? Mmm. Fantastic. Which is uh, delicious, isn't it? <laughs> That's unbelievable. That'll just do the job that I'll love that. Yep, just finishes it off, doesn't it? It's perfect. It's very, very good. Paul's idea for a Thai curry pie is a fantastic thing. You know, it's bringing the Asian influence into what he's trying to do. He's putting it in a pie, which is very, very British. We all love a really decent pie. And we're here in these amazing surroundings. We've got lemongrass, we've got coriander, we've got Thai basil all grown in Yorkshire. Alison and Rob have brought their bounty of exotic herbs for my fragrant pie. One of the things I, I, I loved about watching that was the fact that, Rob, I mean, you're an importer of exotic, you know, flavoured spices, yeah. and the fact that it was you yourself so hang on a minute. We must be able to grow some of this in this country. That's it. I think it's embracing with someone like Alison to bring stuff back to the country, and especially to Yorkshire, mm. and to celebrate the season and what the uses are and what the chefs and the customers can do with it. Really. I mean, for me, the big thing, uh, I, having lived in Cyprus for such a long time, coriander was like a weed. I mean, it just grows everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, it's unbelievable. And it is difficult to grow in this country. No, not at all. Really? No. I mean, we, why We grow is... acres of it. Really? Yes. And with, you don't have to tunnel it until it's exposed? No, not at all. No, we're growing it really from about uh, the end of April, beginning of May, right the way through to end of October. Is there anything that you think, 
I'd love to grow that here, but we just, we just can't. Yeah, I mean, there's things like ginger, obviously a fantastic flavour, which we all know, but it needs a lot of heat, a lot of dryness to grow and get that heat inside the root. Um, so we can't really grow that in Yorkshire. We're always going to need to import pineapples and bananas and grapes and lettuce out of season. There's always going to be that need and that demand. Um, but while we've got the sun and while we've got the, the season for it, if we can get it grown over here, then I think we should be quite proud of it, really. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm amazed, actually. Yorkshire, I'm going to have to come up with my shorts next time. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting this exotic place <laughs> with 40 degree sunshine. Yeah, I'm going to say, right, I'm going to Yorkshire for my holiday. <laughs> Now, I'm going to be using lemongrass, and I see you've got some lemongrass there. Yes, well, fresh lemongrass is, is really good, and uh, the leaves are usually fantastic, but I'm afraid it's just a bit of the end of the season, so I wasn't able to bring great long leaves of, of lemongrass as well. But, uh, yes, it knocks spots off the imported stuff. But flavour-wise? It's very good, and it's fresh. And anything that's fresh has got to be better than stuff that's travelled forever from the other side of the world. OK. I'm going to use it anyway in the dish. Well, that's good. So I'm hoping, it, you know, that flavour comes through to infuse this. <laughs> well, so there's sure no that. pressure at all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so can you run through what else we've got here, then? We've got coriander seed. It's a different variety of the, of the edible herb. Um, and these pod into little seeds. And basically, if you rub them in your fingers and smell them, they're really intense, really lemony, really citrus. This is grown in leaves. Oh. I mean, that's obviously the dried variety there. Yeah. So there's a complete flavour hit. Do you dry the coriander seeds out yourself? Oh uh, yeah, we can do, yeah. The chefs tend to buy them like that, pick the flowers off, cos the flowers are really intense, and then they'll dry them. Yeah. Long may it rain. Long may Yorkshire carry on with their exotic flavours. Yeah. We love it. And Kent. And <laughs> Cheshire. And Lancashire. <laughs> and the Midlands. No. Come on, pull your finger out. <laughs> Right, what I'm going to do now is your favourite chicken Thai dish and I'm going to put a beautiful pastry on the top of it. But this time, I'm going to do it with a traditional Thai food. So it's going to be chicken Thai. Now, if you run through the ingredients here, and I've got some dried coriander seeds here. Now, Rob, can you pick off some of the fresh yeah, stuff as definitely. well? I'm going to pop some of that in a pestle and mortar. Wow. <laughs> You can smell, you can it smell good. Yeah, yeah, hang on. Yeah. Smell this. It's a lot better than the dried. It's it. Well, it's a it's a blend of. Oh, stop! <laughs> this is this is the blend of both, right? Hang on. I can smell it from here. Smell that. Oh, it's, it's both. Wonderful. That's fantastic, isn't it? It's lovely. I spice my pie using fresh red chili. Just add more or less, depending on how much heat you can take. Into the pan it goes. With the banana shallot, which I've chopped up. I've got garlic going in there as well, of course. Something you yes. don't grow in Yorkshire. No, 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 we do no, grow no, garlic. Yes, we do. Yes, we, do. we have it as green, green garlic, so it's yes. like a spring onion. Yeah, yeah. And then you can use everything right from top, from bottom to top. And then as it bulbs up, we get wet garlic. And then as it dries, obviously, we've got dry garlic. And then we've got 12 months of it, yeah. What I'm doing is adding some root ginger to this as well. Yeah, That's unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well. Add green Thai curry paste into the banana shallots and red chili. You smell it straight away, can't you? Oh, it's in, it's, it's instant. Coming. Yeah. yeah. Then add the chicken. I've used breast and thighs. It's cooking off nicely now. This in a pie. I think it's the best of both worlds for me. <laughs> I was a bit surprised at first. I think you were putting pastry on top of a, a Thai curry, basically. Well, why not? Well, why not? That's what I thought when I kind of sat back and thought, well, why not, precisely. When the chicken is brown, add stock, coconut milk, fish sauce, lime leaves and some sweet potato. How do you cope with lime leaves in Yorkshire? Well, I've just started to grow some, but it's going to be a long time before they're ready. Oh, really? But I've just discovered from Rob today there's somebody growing them in Kent. Would there you is. Believe? Yeah, there you go, you see. There is. My adopted <laughs> yeah. county's already in there. <laughs> I only found that out about two days ago as well, and they are absolutely <laughs> I mean, fantastic. Everywhere, so it's yeah. really good to know, actually. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Got some lemongrass. I'm just going to crush it and throw that straight in. Now, the whole thing is now in the pan. Now, this will take about 20 minutes and then pop it in the fridge and leave it to cool. Now, I've got a cold one in the fridge. No, it's not a beer. It's the inside of the pie, which has been chilled. Now, you've got some basil leaves there, some interesting basil leaves, Yes, there's you? Thai basil here, actually. We grow ah. lots of different basil. Can I take some of these? Please do. It's got a fantastic scent, hasn't it? 
And this is one you just started growing as well, yes, isn't it? Yes, yes. Make the short crust pastry for the pie by adding butter and lard to some flour. So you rub this together. Once it's been rubbed together, you squeeze a lemon juice. Again, helps break down that flour, keeps it nice and crumbly. This is a short crust pastry. And then a little pinch of salt, water. Mix that all together into form of paste. You may need to sort of knead it literally five, ten seconds, that's it, just to build up enough gluten to hold it together. Now, over here, I've got my pastry, and this is my tin. So I'm just going to put the filling in to start with, spread that flavour dish all over the bottom so it's nice and even. I'm not going to line the tin with pastry, as my pie filling is quite moist. No one likes a soggy bottom. Now, this is going to form a little rim around the outside so I can bomb the lid to the top. Take it all the way around. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure this is nice and it's good to go. It's nice and pliable, a little bit of flour. I'm gonna roll out the, always have one, two, three for good luck. And what I've got, once you've rolled it out, my new favourite bit of kit is this. Da -da. This is a great little thing. This I used to have one, a massive one. This it's probably nearly double the width in a professional bakery. But all you do is run across the the pastry, and basically just use your cutter, cut all the way through, and then place your dough over the top. Just open it up a little bit with your fingers as you stretch over and then tack it down right to the edge using that rim that you put round of the pastry. That looks fantastic. Open it up a little bit using a knife. It takes a little bit of time but it's worth it because it just looks so attractive. Trim around the outside. Brush with the beaten egg for a golden colour and put it in the oven for 30 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius. There you have it. You have your chicken Thai pie with a beautiful pastry lid on the top, using all the exotic flavours and ingredients from... Yorkshire. From Yorkshire. Well, let's be honest, it could come from Kent, <laughs> Midlands, anywhere in the country. This warming Thai chicken pie comes with a crispy pastry lid to dip in that fragrant curry sauce. Now, guys, you're going to have to wait a little bit later to try this. Yeah, can't Fantastic. Wait, wait for mad, it to cool down a we're bit. We're mad for a good pie, so... <laughs> <laughs> Next, Mel returns to my kitchen as we make our own versions of rice pudding. Mine is a Hollywood family recipe, and Mel's is a traditional...